Welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel where we bring you critical and in-depth reviews of just about every indie game we can get our hands on and today we're going to be taking a look at Jungle Z which was just released for the Nintendo Switch. Now if you've seen the cover art or the trailer you automatically know this is one of those games you can make a snap decision on whether it's the type of game you might like or not. However, checking out the review might make you really happy you did if you checked it out before you made a purchase. As a zombie-based survival game, expectedly we're going to have a pretty light story, and accordingly so when we start the game, we're greeted by a few static images that unveil the story of a few friends who went into the jungle to go camping during the dawn of the zombie apocalypse. And despite a few hilarious text localization issues, we're greeted with the game's main character, whichever one of the two that you did select to actually start playing the game. Alone and with very few supplies, just like any survival game, you'll be expected to salvage and scavenge, all while protecting yourself from mindless zombie hordes. And starting off with only a few bottles of water, a couple cans of food, and a baseball bat for self-defense, you'll have to monitor health stats such as your hydration, your food consumption, your health, as well as ambient statistics such as the day's temperature. And as jungle temperatures in this game can get up to about 33 to 34 degrees centigrade or 110 to 114 degrees Fahrenheit, finding ice cubes on occasion at local campsites may help keep your body temperature down. But besides scavenging for food and water to protect yourself from the environment, you'll have to scavenge for parts such as metal boards, beams, rocks, ropes, and engine parts to be able to create some sustainable defenses that can protect you from the next main gaming element. Though during the day you'll have to fight the elements, at night zombies become more active and come at you in almost a wave style combat. So if you're not able to create sufficient defenses or you're not able to repair them as fast as they're getting broken down, you're probably not going to make it to see the next day. However, merely surviving against the elements and against the zombies isn't the only objective of Jungle Z, as when you're first dropped off with your character in the middle of the woods, you're given the game prompt to find a radio that's located somewhere in a settlement, somewhere on the randomly generated map you've been dropped in. And as every rendition of each game, whether it's a new game or a new game generated after each death is procedurally generated, every time you start the game you'll have to find that objective again. However, items, item drops, and zombie spawns are also randomly generated with each new day, so being able to find the supplies you might need to build your defenses or keep from dehydrating, or to heal yourself from previous zombie attacks will add another level of difficulty. However, should you actually be able to survive for three nights or more, you'll be granted three skill points, which can be allotted into the game's skill trees. And these skills come in the form of either increasing your attack and defense capabilities or reducing your reliance on food and water, as well as increasing your ability to build or repair any things you might have made to help defend yourself from the zombies. And as difficult as even surviving a single night is in this game, having those additional skill points allotted will really help you make it further and further into the game. But that being said, with the difficulty of the initial gameplay, having such a skill tree system that powers up your character, and not merely relying on the same dynamic character throughout the course of the survival game does actually change the genre of the game. With a skill tree setup that's designed to improve your main character and maintain skills with each and every death, this stops being a zombie survival game and starts being a roguelike zombie survival game. Every blueprint that you collect and read throughout the course of your gameplay allowing you to up your defenses, as well as any skill points you may manage to obtain through a single gameplay will stay with you through the next iteration of the game. And while all of this does actually seem pretty decent and may provide a fairly unique and challenging experience for the player, there are a few critiques that do need to be noted before you dive in. The main one of course being the realization that this is a roguelike zombie game. It's not pure survival and does actually insist that you start over your gameplay time and time again to build a character that's strong enough eventually to survive. And in that sense, if you are a fan of survival games, this might not actually be to your liking. The next would be in the procedural generation and the randomized item drops. Though procedural generation does help the game change up and make each experience feel different and unique, and prompts you to explore further and further with each reiteration of the game, each of the environmental areas present, such as shopping malls, little parking areas, campgrounds, and homes are all pretty much identical as far as their visuals go. The zombie sprites as well don't possess a lot of diversity, there are a handful, but if you're planning on playing this game over and over and over, there are only a handful. The randomization of item drops as well, though they do actually respawn at the beginning of every daybreak along with all of the zombies, does add to the diversity of the game and again increase your need to explore and find more items. However, due to the true randomization, sometimes you just won't be able to find certain items such as weapons that you will need to defend yourself from the zombies. And as zombies in the game, once seeing you or hearing your footfalls or hearing the sounds of your general expiration, will lock onto you and chase you, 
The fact that they don't stop chasing you, even if you commit to running through an entire 24 hour period in the game, makes it to where if you don't have a way to defend yourself, you really can't win. There is no ability to hide and you can't enter any buildings, and unless you can create a defensible point in the game, you won't be able to survive the night. Additionally, health items are very few and far between and don't heal your character very much. And whether this was intentional or not to push forward the roguelike elements of the game, not being able to find health or not being able to recover your health by sleeping or not being able to find a weapon anywhere can leave a player feeling fairly frustrated. And a final note though, in addition to those early textual issues with localization, is the basic nature of the graphic polish itself. The visuals of the character movement do feel a bit uninspired and mechanical, especially going from a run to a creep mode, and at multiple points during the gameplay the attack animations just might not happen. And on the note of graphic quality and polish, the first thing that any player will realize as soon as they dive into this game is the excessive load times. Initially starting the game is going to take you about 2 or 3 minutes just to load that first iteration of gameplay. And then upon restart or any death, it's going to take you about another minute to a minute and a half to get into the new game. But overall, despite all of these issues with the game, there were some points that I enjoyed and I really did find the potential in the roguelike element of a survival game. However, that being said, it definitely needs a lot of polish and could really benefit from a few patches. So at a price tag just north of $12 USD, it definitely sets its own bar a little bit higher than it can meet. But anyway, if you found the review helpful or you just like the content, feel free to throw me a like or a comment to show your support, and don't forget to click that little bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. There are new and unique indies coming out literally every single day, so there's always going to be something new to find right here. But since I can only cover a few games a week, if you want to hint at which one I might be reviewing next, you can follow us on Twitter. But anyway, this has been Budget Gamers. As always, thanks for watching.